April 25th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Acts chapter 5 from the New Testament. Now a man named Ananias, together with Sapphira, his wife, sold a piece of property. He kept back for himself part of the proceeds with his wife's knowledge. He brought only part of it and placed it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back for yourself part of the proceeds from the sale of the land? Before it was sold, did it not belong to you? And when it was sold, was the money not at your disposal? How have you thought up this deed in your heart? You have not lied to people but to God. When Ananias heard these words, he collapsed and died, and great fear gripped all who heard about it. So the young men came, wrapped him up, carried him out, and buried him. After an interval of about three hours, his wife came in, but she did not know what had happened. Peter said to her, Tell me, were the two of you paid this amount for the land? Sapphira said, Yes, that much. Peter then told her, Why have you agreed together to test the Spirit of the Lord? Look, the feet of those who have buried your husband are at the door and they will carry you out. At once she collapsed at his feet and died. So when the young men came in, they found her dead, and they carried her out and buried her beside her husband. Great fear gripped the whole church and all who heard about these things. Now many miraculous signs and wonders came about among the people through the hands of the apostles. By common consent, they were all meeting together in Solomon's portico. None of the rest dared to join them, but the people held them in high honor. More and more believers in the Lord were added to their number, crowds of both men and women. Thus they even carried the sick out into the streets and put them on cots and pallets, so that when Peter came by, at least his shadow would fall on some of them. A crowd of people from the towns around Jerusalem also came together, bringing the sick and those troubled by unclean spirits. They were all being healed. Now the high priest rose up and all those with him, that is the religious party of the Sadducees, and they were filled with jealousy. They laid hands on the apostles and put them in a public jail. But during the night an angel of the Lord opened the doors of the prison, let them out, and said, Go and stand in the temple courts and proclaim to the people all the words of this life. When they heard this, they entered the temple courts at daybreak and began teaching now when the high priest and those who were with him arrived, they summoned the Sanhedrin, that is the whole high council of the Israelites, and sent to the jail to have the apostles brought before them. But the officers who came for them did not find them in the prison, so they returned and reported, We found the jail locked securely and the guards standing at the doors, but when we opened them we found no one inside. Now when the commander of the temple guard and the chief priest heard this report, they were greatly puzzled concerning it, wondering what this could be. But someone came and reported to them, Look, the men you put in prison are standing in the temple courts and teaching the people. Then the commander of the temple guard went with the officers and brought the apostles without the use of force, for they were afraid of being stoned by the people. When they had brought them, they stood them before the council and the high priest questioned them, saying, We gave you strict orders not to teach in his name. Look, you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and you intend to bring this man's blood on us. But Peter and the apostles replied, We must obey God rather than people. The God of our forefathers raised up Jesus, whom you seized and killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him to his right hand as leader and savior to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses of these events, and so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. Now when they heard this, they became furious and wanted to execute them. But a Pharisee, whose name was Gamaliel, a teacher of the law who was respected by all the people, stood up in the council and ordered the men to be put outside for a short time. Then he said to the council, Men of Israel, pay close attention to what you are about to do to these men. For some time ago, Thutis rose up, claiming to be somebody, and about 400 men joined him. He was killed, and all who followed him were dispersed, and nothing came of it. After him, Judas the Galilean arose in the days of the census, 
and incited people to follow him in revolt. He too was killed, and all who followed him were scattered. So in this case, I say to you, stay away from these men and leave them alone, because if this plan or this undertaking originates with people, it will come to nothing. But if it is from God, you will not be able to stop them, or you may even be found fighting against God. He convinced them, and they summoned the apostles and had them beaten. Then they ordered them not to speak in the name of Jesus and release them. So they left the council rejoicing, because they had been considered worthy to suffer dishonor for the sake of the name. And every day, both in the temple courts and from house to house, they did not stop teaching and proclaiming the good news that Jesus was the Christ. Wow, God. To be beaten, possibly up to 39 lashings. Two on the front of the chest, one on the back. Two on the front of the chest, one on the back. With thick leather straps, multiple straps. All of them. And for them to leave there in incredible pain, bleeding, they left rejoicing because they had been considered worthy to suffer dishonor for the sake of your name, God. Wow. I wonder how many of us would do that. That we would be beaten down because we were Christians, physically beaten to a pulp, and upon release would go out rejoicing your name because we were found worthy to be called Christians, to be called followers of you. I think we really need to stop and think about this today, each one of us. At what point wouldn't we rejoice? If somebody argues with us or calls us nasty names online when we uh, talk about you, God, when other Christians talk behind our back, when people make fun of us, at what point would we stop rejoicing? Would we rejoice always? I don't know. I can't speak for anybody else listening, but... For me personally, sometimes it just gets to be too much. Too much for me. I know not too much for you, but too much for me. I do rejoice when people know without a shadow of a doubt that I am a follower of yours. <sighs> but sometimes the earthly price that is paid is hard. And I'm not even, I'm in the United States for Pete's sakes. I'm not even in a country where it would be a threat of death to even have the Bible. I mean, I have probably six or seven Bibles just around my desk right now. I don't know what real persecution is. And yet, sometimes the persecution levels that I have, that I'm uncomfortable with or comfortable with, seem real to me, yet compared to what, Christians around the world have to go through, jailed and beaten, threatened with death, their families killed, they're killed. Kind of makes me sound like a spoiled child, which I probably am. Got it. I don't, I don't know what to say today. I think today is one of those days where I think a lot and long and hard about this passage that if I'm getting impatient and frustrated when I feel like I'm being attacked by the people around me just verbally and I'm definitely not rejoicing <laughs> what's gonna happen to me when things get worse when I'm physically threatened for being a follower of yours like cave Gosh, I hope not. God, I do ask that you show me how to quit being spoiled. Gosh, especially even here in the United States, we <laughs> are just so spoiled in so many areas that we don't even realize. 
Help me tap into your strength, your understanding, your patience, your love for people, even when they're doing things like that. I want to endure for you. I want to do my very best for you. And I need to know what that looks like. In your son's name I pray, amen.